Okay, why America is retarded. Um, I'm Australian for the just in case you're not sure, but anyway, let's get into it. So this one puzzles me. Mom. If I saw that word, I'd say mom. In a like, okay, here are some words: bum, some, rum, dumb, plum, num. Um, I'm sure you can think of others. Um, mum. Mum rhymes with those. So why is it spelled M O M? Let me see what else I wrote. Yeah. So why is it mom? I don't get it. I, this is just, it doesn't make any sense. Rom, Som, I had a friend whose name was Som. Mom, you don't say mom, only in bloody, bloody ports of Britain would you say mom or something. Okay, um, you know, pom, com, mom, it's mom. I don't get it. Everyone, even in America, they say hey ma, uh, or ma, do they say mom? Anyway, alright, next one, color, honor. Flavor, humor, this is just a language thing. Why does America not have the OU? They just have the O. You know? I, I don't know if they have a French origin, but the spelling is important. It gives you a clue where the word came from. Anyway, that one's not as major. Let's keep going. Okay. Theater, fiber, center, meter. Not centimeter, but center. Um, they spell it ER, cause it's like, but it sounds like theater. You don't, you know, you can't have an RE that don't make no sense. I'm guessing this also has a uh, French origin, possibly. Okay. Um, okay, this one really bugs me. Math. In America, they call it math. In Australia, it's maths. Okay. Um, short for mathematics. The example I use is, let me see what I wrote here. Stats. Short for statistics. No one says stat. You say stats. For statistics, it's mathematics, it should be maths. Now, I have a couple of theories. and Anyway, um, so I think it could be like a plural thing, like sheep, one sheep, eight sheep. There were eight sheep. There were ten fish. They can be plurals, and I think maybe some people think math. Math sounds like a plural for some reason. It just has a sound about it. I can't think of other plurals. The other theory <laughs> I have, to me, um, uh, yeah, math isn't a plural to me. It should be maths. Um, yeah, if you have a lisp, a lisp, I should say, <laughs> then it might be difficult to say maths. You might say math. Math. It's too hard. I, I don't know. It's, it's just annoying. It's maths, okay? Maths. Mathematics, maths. Statistics, stats. Okay, the next one, the letter Z. Okay, did you notice how I said it? Z, not Z, okay, Z, <laughs> like, here, here's my theory, you know, you go A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, N, Z, okay, it doesn't, not every letter has to be E, so I was, I was going to say, you know, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, he, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, E, P. You know, it's W. For example, right? You don't say we. You say W. You don't say me. You say M. It's Z. It's not Z. <laughs> so that yeah, this is my example. All right, next one. Talking of Z, Z. Sorry, now I'm getting mixed up. Z. Nationalize, rationalize, analyze, paralyze. Organize, recognize, apologize, capitalize. All of those words in Australian would have an S. I'm like 99% sure. Because that's how it's spelled. With an S. Okay? I know it has a Z sound. No, it's got to be a Z because it sounds like a Z. <laughs> so here are some examples. If you want to use that philosophy. You know, would you say rise? Like the Dark Knight rises with <laughs> Zs everywhere. Comprise. Compromise, abuse, lose, amuse, raise, cars, daisy, please, capitalism. I guess that relates to capitalize. Pose, pose. Whoops, I was going to add more. <laughs> Finish. But see how stupid they look? I, it's hard to read those words because I can't even tell what it's meant to be. It looks stupid. Just because it's an, like a Z sound doesn't mean you change the S to a Z. Okay? Especially the examples rise, comprise, compromise. They're the same sort of thing here. 
You know, I don't even know if that one's spelt with a Z in America. You know, what about this one? Pri prize has a Z, but that's a different word. Anyway, um, <laughs> this stuff really annoys me. It's just stupid. Uh, that's another example. Why not take it easy? The, the 19th century. Oh, it's an S sound, so we should spell it with an S. It can't be a C. Well, then that might give us a that might give us our language some some class, some like I don't know, some kind of style to it, some kind of origin. Let's just make it sound, you know. Hand me that knife. <laughs> anyway, uh, fueling, traveling. These should have double L's. I'm pretty sure, like in Britain and in Australia as well. Okay. But whatever you guys don't like, two L's is too complicated for you. This is another example. Defense, license, offense, pretense. Now, I'm pretty sure this is how they're meant to be spelt. Okay, but in America, okay, they got an S, an S, an S, and an S. You know why? Because it's like I just said, with century, back here, right, 19th century, they've got to spell everything with an S. So if you're going to do an S, why don't you make this one an S as well? License. See how stupid that looks? No, no. See, that one's a C, but this one's an S. I don't know why. It's just that that's the way it is. Okay? All right. Maneuver, estrogen, encyclopedia. See, there's an A-E, O-E, O-E, right? America can't handle that, apparently, so they get rid of it. Analog, catalog, dialog. They don't even have the U UE. They're like, what does that mean? Analog way? Get rid of that. <laughs> Sorry, I just sort of do a redneck impersonation for Americans, I guess. Okay, um, yeah, I want to tell a story about this word flammable. I think I understand this story pretty well. Here's my question. What does flammable mean? Okay, does anyone know what it means? Well, it's not a real word, okay? I can't actually remember what I wrote here, so we'll see how this goes. What did I write next? Yeah, the real word is inflammable, okay? It's a verb. Inflame is a verb. You can inflame something. Something can become, a person even, can become inflamed. You can't flame something, so something can't be flammable. It's inflammable, okay? Does that make sense? It's a, it's a okay, I think I wrote... Yeah, if you can eat something, it's edible. Eat, edible. Inflame, inflammable. It can be inflamed. All right? Flame is not a bloody verb. <laughs> but, but seriously, these idiots thought in, inflammable meant not flammable. Okay? Remember, which was not a word in the first place. Okay? Right? Now, this is like thinking anything starting with I-N is the opposite. Right? For example... Introduce. Oh, that means to not traduce, right? Well, that means you not, you are not traducing, okay? You know, invite is the opposite of vite, is it, apparently? Um, yeah, the words should really be inflammable, mean it can be lit up, in, you know, set on fire, and non inflammable means it can't be, okay? Just like other words. You know, you would say, uh, I didn't introduce, or you're not invited. You can't say, you're invited. You know, that's not the opposite. Apparently, I think in the 20s, right, people were like, you know, um, you know, don't worry about that. You can, you can set up, you can put that couch near the fire because it's inflammable. They thought it meant, oh, it's inflammable. It can't be flame, you know, you know, um, so they actually changed the word. We have to give in. Yeah. The retards won, we have to give in, and now apparently flammable is a word. By the way, no, no offense to retards. Retard has multiple meanings, okay? It doesn't, I'm not talking about people with mental, well, in a way I am, but different kinds, okay? It's just a word meaning someone just doing something stupid, okay? But yeah, literally, people were like, things were getting set on fire by accident, because they, th they thought it was inflammable, and it was inflammable, but they thought it meant it was safe. So we have to give in and call things flammable, which isn't a goddamn word. Anyway, all right, hope that makes sense. Okay, billion. This one really annoys me, but I'm kind of in the, I'm like the only person that cares. Look at these words, million, billion, trillion, quadrillion. Can you see the prefixes? Okay, bi, tri, quad in particular, and mil is like mono, maybe. 
whatever. Okay? So if a million's got six zeros, you can't you can't just after nine zeros decide, well that's a billion. Like you've you've established the pattern. The first one has six. Three zeros is a thousand. That's not part of the pattern yet. A million is six. So you know, like every six has to be you know what I mean? A billion can't just be a thousand million. It doesn't make sense, okay? So don't jump to a billion yet. Alright, so this is the proper system, the way I see it, okay? A thousand, a million, a thousand million, then a billion, okay? Twelve zeros, then a thousand billion, then a trillion. Now, a lot of people, I want to make sure this is clear. Just because you're not used to this doesn't mean it's wrong. This makes way more sense than the system most people use. Million, six zeros, billion, twelve, trillion, eighteen. It's a nice, simple pattern and in between you've got thousands of that okay that it makes it it also means you're efficient you can get up to this size of a number and you only need the word trillion if you do it the other way you're up you're already up to like pentillion or sextillion or something like that okay um, now England used to most of this I find is America just has their stupid own little rules <laughs> whereas England and Europe seem to have logical things that make more sense but in 1974 everyone kept saying billions and billions or billions of dollars billions of kilometers billions of miles and then England gave in okay but I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure France and Germany still have it like France has million uh, I think it's une mille uh, un million un milliard so they don't say thousand million they have a special word un milliard un billion um, billiard. But, you know, they do it the proper way. Okay, so here's an example. In my system, how many sixes go into 24? Four sixes, okay? So that's just a quadrillion, okay? In the proper system, as far as I'm concerned. In the other system, what is it called? <laughs> it's septillion, okay? You can figure it out yourself. You sort of have to take away three and then divide by three, because I guess every three is another step even though three zeros is only a thousand so anyway it's septillion okay but can you see that for four sixes is 24 quadrillion nice and simple and again like I said you're running out of words septillion okay yep runs out of prefixes is what I was saying and yeah just because everyone says it doesn't make it right this actually really annoys me because Carl Sagan I, I'm a huge fan but he says billions of on billions of stars exist, you know, galaxy or whatever, and Neil deGrasse Tyson, everyone says, you know, billion, and it's like, they're using the wrong meaning of it, anyway, okay, dates, <sighs> okay, this is my birthday, right, the 5th of December, 1985, in Australia, I don't know if you guys have seen this, but I'm not trying to be a jerk, by the way, if you're American, just, just realize none of your stuff makes any sense, um, this is the day, this is the month, this is the year. Okay, can you see how it's getting small, bigger, bigger? America, they got to go back to front. It doesn't make any sense. The, <laughs> the month, then the day, then the year. Here's an analogy, right? This is a made-up address. But see how it starts with specific, you know, just the number of the house and then the street and then the suburb. And then the, I guess you should have the state, New South Wales, and then Australia. It's a logical thing. You don't go, oh, well, I live in Sydney, Pancake Avenue, Australia, 43. You know, you got to have like a logical order. Okay, small specific things to big general. Okay, makes sense, doesn't make any sense. Next one. Okay, this one. <laughs> this one. Can anyone explain the imperial system? Let's take a look at it, okay? It makes no sense. Okay, 12 inches makes a foot. 3 feet makes a yard, naturally. <laughs> this one's ridiculous. 1,760 yards. I look, I'm pretty sure 11 is a factor, right? 11 times uh, a lot of factors of 2 and a factor of 5. So this is, has quite a few factors, but 11... 11 is a factor. I'm pretty sure 7 is not a factor. And 3 is not a factor. So why would you do that? 
if you want factors and primes and stuff, you know, 60, 360, those sorts of numbers are fine. Even uh, something like 420 or 210 have some logic to them. Does 7 go into this? Let me think. No, it doesn't. So why? Okay, 16 ounces in a pound. <laughs> 14 pounds in a stone. I looked all these up. 160 stones in a ton. Okay, and then we've got volume. So obviously this is distance, um, mass, or weight, what a lot of people call weight. Volume, two pints in a quart, four quarts in a gallon. That one actually kind of makes sense, I guess. And this is what blows my mind. Look at these numbers. There's none of them match. There is none. You can't find any matches. I mean, these are all the same, but that's... You're missing the point if you think, oh, well, look, these are the same. You know what I mean? There's no pattern. Okay? <laughs> uh, I don't know why I jumped to Fahrenheit, but okay, Fahrenheit. So in Celsius, water melts or freezes at zero degrees Celsius. Oh, I guess I should say ice melts. Same thing. I'm just thinking of the uh, compound water, H2O. And then it boils or condenses or evaporates, well, uh, yeah, no, boils is the right word, 100 degrees Celsius. See how it's really nice? In Fahrenheit, it's 32 degrees and 212 degrees. Why would you use that? Anyway, okay, yeah, I just, I don't think it's, it's just what people are used to, okay? Um, the metric system, so obviously this is not what America uses, this is what the rest of the world uses, okay? There's consistent prefixes like milli means a thousand, kilo means thousand, mega means million, centi means a hundred, you know, deci means a tenth, there's heaps. And they're just always the same, always the same symbol. Powers of ten, you know what's good about powers of ten? It's easy to times or divide, positive powers, negative powers, you know. None of the digits change, it's, it just works really nice. And yeah, it just makes sense. Um, and yeah, okay, I do have a serious question. Okay, can anyone answer this? How did America land on the moon first? Using the imperial system. Now this is, look, I, I just want to acknowledge, I know some people think, oh, it's a hoax. That's so insulting and stupid. First off, it's stupid and wrong. But it's also insulting to all the people and the amazing achievement to actually have landed on the moon. That is a huge deal. But seriously, how, the, how did America do it using the imperial system? Um, I'm pretty sure they, uh, there have been a number of mistakes and problems that occurred like with NASA because of unit problems like conversions. Someone thought it was in meters, someone thought it was in feet, and they didn't convert or they didn't realize, so they lost lots of money and people might have even got hurt. I don't know, but anyway. All right. Oh, yeah, there is an actual bibliography. So, yeah, maybe let me know what you think. You know, I'm not against America, I think it's a great country, but all this rules about <laughs> spelling and like just these systems, who uses this? Who uses this? Alright, uh, I'll leave it there, so bye for now, thanks for watching.